Hello student, I am Professor Devashish Bose, Head Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwavidale Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. Today I am going to present a lecture of BSc first semester on the unit Introduction to Forensic Science which has been jointly prepared by myself and Mr. Giraj Sharma, a PhD scholar and a UGC GRF at Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwavidale Sagar. So let's start our discussion while taking a look at what we are going to learn today. In today's lecture, module 1 will be dedicated to Introduction to Central Forensic Science Laboratories. Module 2 will be Organizational Setup of Central Forensic Science Laboratory. Module 3 will be Ranks in Central Forensic Science Laboratory. Module 4 will be the functions of a Central Forensic Science Laboratory. Module 5 will deal about the limitations of a Central Forensic Science Laboratory. And finally, Module 6 will be our conclusion. So, my dear student, let's start with Module 1, that is Introduction to Central Forensic Science Laboratory. One thing which I would like to discuss here is that, do you know what Forensic Science Laboratory and Central Forensic Science Laboratory means? Can anyone answer this question? Both si sound similar except the word central, which means one is a state and another is in the control of the central government. Where lies the difference? The difference mainly lies between when a case which is not being solved by a state government or state Forensic Science Laboratory is finding it difficult or it's a complicated case where they need a second opinion or suddenly there starts a second line of investigation. In that case, Central Forensic Science Laboratory comes into existence. When we need some reference, it, you can say it's a referral laboratory, a kind of thing. So this is. So now we start about the Central Forensic Science Laboratory. As we have talked in the previous lecture, Forensic Science Laboratory is a multidisciplinary laboratory that provides scientific support and service to the criminal investigation. And we can say it answers the query of a court of law, whether it's a Central Forensic Science Laboratory or a State Forensic Science Laboratory. So I would like to discuss about the Directorate of Forensic Science Services, that is DFSS. So what is DFSS? DFSS stands for Directorate of Forensic Science Services, which was created in the year 2002 by Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India. After its bifurcation from Bureau of Police Research and Development based on the recommendation of National Human Rights Commission and Padmanabhaiya Committee on Police Reforms. So my dear students, now you will be thinking, uh, what was the mission of Directorate of Forensic Science Services? The mission statement of Directorate of Forensic Science Services is to render high quality and credibility forensic service to judicial delivery system, that is criminal justice system. Now, we are going to discuss the Central Forensic Science Laboratory. As we know that Directorate of Forensic Science serves, administers the work of six Central Forensic Science Laboratory under its edges, that we call it CFSL, located at Kolkata, Hyderabad and Chandigarh. These were the old FSLs and with three new FSLs at Bhopal, Pune and Guwahati. CFSL Kolkata is the oldest institution established in the year 1957, followed by CFSL Hyderabad in the year 1968 and finally CFSL Chandigarh in the year 1972. The three new CFSLs located at Bhopal, Pune and Guwahati starts its functioning in the year 2011. So for the sake of convenience, we can make the chart of CFSL. So my dear student, this was the brief introduction of Central Forensic Science Laboratories. Now we are going to learn another important module that is divisions or sections of a Central Forensic Science Laboratory. I think uh, you know about the setup of State Forensic Science Laboratory. Now we will be discussing about the Central Forensic Science Laboratory. It's almost similar to that of the State Forensic Science Laboratory because the sections remains the same. Only different is the functions and the receiving and disposal of the case. But 
for the sake of convenience and for the sake of your knowledge, we will be start discussing about the organizational setup of a central forensic science laboratory. In the above chart, we are seeing the organization of such as home affairs, DFSS, CFSLs, head of office scientific, technical section and administrative section. Thus, we will discuss divisions of central forensic science laboratory one by one. Forensic Biology and Serology Division As we have studied in the previous class of biology is a branch of the science dealing with the study of living organism. But in Forensic Science is deal with the examination of biological materials encountered at a scene of crime against a person or property. Thus, in a single word we can say that Forensic biology is the branch of forensic science which deals with the application of biology to the court of law. Now we are going to talk about the biological evidences. So what are biological evidences? Biological evidences are the main evidence is blood. As you know blood is one of the important evidence which you can found at the scene of crime. Here we will have to brief discussion about the blood. Blood is made up of generally two parts that is cellular and another is a plasma part. The cellular part consists of erythrocytes, leukocytes and platelets. Whereas the plasma part of the blood contains organic and inorganic materials. At the crime scene blood could be present in the two form that is wet or dry. Collection, preservation, handling and forwarding commonly known as transportation of the exhibits to forensic science laboratory will lead to a good and satisfactory result. Following methods should be used at a crime scene if the blood is in a wet condition. Either take it as a swab or use FTA paper and if the blood is dry then you can use a swab, cut it, scrap it, collect the entire metal, lift it and pack it and send it. So my dear student, after examining the blood, a forensic scientist can give his opinion that whether it is blood or not. If it is a blood, then we perform the confirmatory examination of the blood for species identification, individualization and grouping. So these are the important job, whether it is a A group blood, B group blood, AB or O. You must be knowing all the groups of the blood. So, this is the function of the Forensic Science Laboratory Serology section or the biology, which comes under the biology. Next biological evidence, which is again very important, is hair. Hairs include the head, pubic, which frequently constitute the biological evidence normally found at a scene of crime. And their identification can be of great forensic importance. Formerly, the principal method employed in forensic hair analysis were limited to morphological examination and comparison. But now the things have changed. With this, we come to fibers to find out the origin, individualization and comparison and matching of the fiber. Diatoms. This is very important in case of confirming an antimortem drowning with a postmortem drowning. A skeleton, skull, bone, it, they are used to determine the gender, race, origin, stature and the species to which it belongs. Insects, flies and maggots, these are very important to determine the time since death and place of death. Plant material, leaves, woods, seed, fruits, flowers, pollen and any other material originating from. These are, helps to determine the origin species and comparison with the control and standards to find out various clauses. Biological fluids like semen, saliva and urine. These are used to determine the species, origin and individualization. Examination of the above mentioned physical evidence can be done in different types of crime cases such as in cases of sexual offense. Dory death, murder, disputed paternity and identification of unidentified bodies in a case of mass disaster. After looking at the biology section, now we move on to forensic physics section. 
Physics section of the Forensic Science Laboratory deals with the following type of examination which are generally carried out. They are glass, soil, tool marks, paints, metallic pieces, threads, ropes, cloth pieces, struggle and cut marks on cloth, knot examination and examination of metallic sick, etc. With this, we move to another section that is forensic chemistry. It is very important case and most bulk of the case comes here. It does performs both qualitative and quantitative examination mainly of alcoholic beverages, drugs. They also used to determine qualitative and quantitative compositions of chemical powders, dyes, organic and inorganic substances. Moreover, it also examines the presence of inflammable fluids in burn residues of arson and fire cases. As we note in today's date, adulteration is a common problem. Nowadays in food, edible oil, petroleum products, cement, spices, juice, etc, etc are adulterated. So to know the purity and genuineness, uh, we send the samples to forensic chemistry. In addition to this, the trap cases, acid attack cases, we send the samples to the chemistry section. Now we move on to another important section that is forensic toxicology. It deals with the presence of poison in human and animal organism. Moreover, examination of blood, saliva, urine, vomit, hair, skin, stomach wash, food, tablet, powders, syrups, needles and other substance that were found or encountered at the scene of crime. So now we move on to another interesting and the most newly constituted section that is DNA fingerprinting. It deals with the case of disputed paternity, identification, mass disaster case etc. It can handle different type of exhibits from the examination of DNA such as blood, saliva, urine, bone, hair or any material of biological origin. Forensic Ballistic Division, it involves the examination of firearm to determine the nature and type of weapon used in the crime. Range of firing, linking fired bullet or cartridge is with the suspected weapons. Pellet examination, VAD, burnt and unburnt powder grains and checking the mechanism of the weapon for the evidence of accidental firing. To ascertain their caliber, make, model, time and to establish a link of the firearm with the scene of crime. Explosive division, they sometimes works with the chemistry division or they are independently a division itself. The explosive divisions gives its opinion on the nature of the explosive that is civil, military, IAD and explosive device used in crime, riots, police firing, encounters or in the reconstruction of a scene of crime dealing with explosive. Laboratory analysis of explosives and their detection. Voice analysis division. This is the main branch or the main attraction of a central forensic science laboratory. The division examines the telephonic recordings or other kind of recordings to identify the speaker. A very advanced version of computerized voice spectrograph namely computerized speech lab model CSL4500 is been used for the analysis of speaker identification. Computer forensic division. This division focuses on acquisition, preservation, identification, extraction, documentation and reporting of digital evidence in various computer related crimes, evidences forwarded to the laboratory. Computer forensics involves the use of sophisticated technology, hardware as well as software and documented procedures. The digital evidence is now a very vital to solve many white collar and blue collar crimes. Question document division. GEQD is a part of CFSL. Case pertaining to analysis of handwriting, typewriting, computer typing, printed document, alteration, addition, erasures, especially mechanically erased document, obliterated document, intended documents, frauds, forgery and burned document are being analyzed in this section. The CFSL sections are very much well equipped for the document analysis. Here I would like to clear one thing that 
these divisions of a laboratory can change from one laboratory to another laboratory but generally in CFSL they are similar. They will have basic departments of physics, chemistry and biology and these labs are basically specialized. Now we move on to our new module, module 3, ranks in central forensic science laboratory. So my dear student, now we are going to study about the gadgeted officer's rank at a central forensic science laboratory. So in the following chart, we will see the different ranks at the scientific officers. In this chart, for the sake of simplicity, central forensic science laboratory has been divided into two parts. One is scientific staff and another is ministerial staff. So first of all, we are going to talk about the scientific staff of the Central Forensic Science Laboratory. So let's start by one by one. The coordinator, the in charge of the laboratory, not below the rank of deputy director. Coordinator is the main scientist of the Central Forensic Science Laboratory. Deputy director of the Central Forensic Science Laboratory controls all the activity of lab, whether it is administrative and scientific and he assists the directors. Scientific manpower. For the sake of convenience, scientific manpower of a central forensic science laboratory has been divided into three parts. Group A, Group B and Group C. We will discuss these groups one by one. Group A. These categories of scientists belongs to the gadgeted officer category that includes deputy director and scientist D, assistant director, scientist C and senior scientific officer and scientist B. Group B. This category of scientists namely have gadgeted and non-gadgeted officers that mainly are junior scientific officer in the gadgeted and senior scientific assistant in the non-gadgeted group. Group C. These category comprises of assistant central intelligence officer divided into two categories. One is scientific assistant that includes lab assistant. Another category is photographer. Ministerial staff. This section of Central Forensic Science Laboratory consists of two groups, Group B and Group C. So let's start one by one, Group B. This group has the following personals, Assistant, Steno, Grade 2 and Translator. Group C has the following personals, that is Upper Divisional Kirk, normally known as UDC, Steno, Grade 3, Lower Divisional Kirk, Staff Driver and Multitasking Officer. So, it is the organizational setup of forensic science laboratory. This is basically we have taken from the section of CFSL Pune. Normally, other central forensic science laboratory differs in their staff. The staffing basically depends from lab to lab. The structure of the old CFSLs, that is the Kolkata, Chandigarh and Hyderabad and the other laboratories, that is Pune, Bhopal and Guwahati have something different. They are almost similar. There will be a director, scientific officers and ministerial staff, but the nomenclature differs. So you can refer to their website or other books for more clarification and details. With this, we come to the end of module 3. Now we start with our new module, module 4, function of a central forensic science laboratory. So my dear student, we will study about the forensic science laboratory that is the central governments under forensic science laboratory, how they work. As we have discussed in the previous module, forensic science laboratory is a multidisciplinary laboratory established to provide scientific support and service to the investigation of crime. Forensic science laboratory does a lot of functions apart from the scientific examination. Basically, a central forensic science laboratory is one of the laboratory which normally caters to the need of state or referred case. In addition to this, forensic scientist also collects, preserves and transports the physical evidence from the scene of crime to the forensic science laboratory. But this is not the case in the case of CFSL. They rarely go to a scene of crime. but if it is in one of the important scene of crime and is in the same city where the CFSL is located or in the vicinity. Normally, in case of a heinous crime, 
the officers or the scientific officers from a CFSL are called. As we know that the forensic science started its work with the committance of the crime. Whatever evidence they get at the crime scene, they give a proper treatment to them according to its nature. So now what are the different functions at a crime scene? Functions of a central forensic science laboratory. Investigating officer collects and preserves the exhibit from the crime scene if they are being sent then the box with article and supply to the respective police stations. Uh, this is job where for central forensic science laboratories officer are being called to the state. Otherwise, simply they received a second batch of sample from the state laboratories or other laboratories. However, important cases on special requests are being treated as priority. The reports of examined case are sent to the related police station or FSLs or the person who are receiving the queries. At the time of trial in the courts, the related examiner need to visit the concerned court on their summon to read out their report or to explain the report. In a state forensic science laboratory is unable to perform the examination of the exhibit on their own. So, they may send the case to Central Forensic Science Laboratory as I had mentioned before. To assist and advise the central and state government in all forensic related matter and extend forensic science assistance to manage natural disaster and calamities. To develop national database on various forensic indices to control recidivism repeated crime and strengthen homeland security. They are also destined to provide high quality and on-time forensic service to the criminal justice delivery system by creating capacity and capability at the central level. With this, we come to the end of Module 4. Module 5 – Limitations of a Central Forensic Science Laboratory My dear student, now we will be discussing the limitations of a central forensic science laboratory. You should not forget that this is also a simple laboratory. Of course, if we compare with a state laboratory, they are well equipped, the scientists are well trained, but still there are limitations which needed to be overcome. So as we know that forensic science laboratory has its own limitation like the results of the exhibit depends on the collection and preservation of physical evidence. If the investigating officer or the sending laboratory performs well on their part then it will give a good result or if proper caution is not taken during the time of collecting the physical evidence definitely it will ruin the whole examination and the analysis procedure, whether it's a state laboratory or a central laboratory. Sometimes the limitations are of instrumental techniques. Maybe the instrument is broken down or something else. So at scene of crime, sometimes forensic science gets exhibit in very small quantity. So the available technique is not appropriate for their analysis. Therefore, this is also a limitation in a forensic science laboratory. Moreover, all laboratories are not connected to CFSL, that is state FSLs are not connected to CFSL by internet. They are not digitalized. So this is a problem, they cannot connect. Suppose we are analyzing a central forensic science laboratory is analyzing a report or a case from a state forensic science laboratory and they are not connected with each other. So it is a problem. In addition to this, state forensic science laboratory do not have such facility by which they can directly connect to the scene of crime. In turn, what will be they doing? They cannot answer the questions of the CFSLs. So with this, we are moving towards the conclusion of this lecture. So let's start our new module, that is module 6, conclusion. Dear student, it's time to conclude the lecture. In the entire lecture, we have seen that central forensic science laboratories are playing a significant role in the criminal justice system. Central forensic science laboratories have their own jurisdiction according to which they accomplish their work.
In this module, we have discussed about the Directorate of Forensic Science Services that command over all CFSLs in India. They decide all the policies and schemes for the upliftment of CFSLs. In addition to this, at present in India, we have six central forensic science laboratories which are under the direct supervision of Directorate of Forensic Science Services. Moreover, in this whole lecture, we have discussed what central forensic science laboratory is, how they are working in the country and how they have been established. We have also talked about the organizational setup of the Central Forensic Science Laboratory. In addition to this, we have also explained the function and limitation of these laboratories. So, it was all about the Central Forensic Science Laboratory. So, keep enjoying and have a nice day and keep thinking on what we have discussed today. So, with all this information here, we come to the end of today's lecture. My dear student, do keep in mind what we have discussed today. It's time for you to all do some self-study. This is Professor Devashish Bose signing off. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website for MCQs, quizzes, LOR at www.cec.nic.in. Till then, goodbye.